Welcome to Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Gummy Nerf Secrets of Longevity.com. Something I've always been quite interested in at times of practice, but a lot of times I've actually fallen off the bandwagon and following it, has been cold water therapy. Uh, I've really only done this to any regular degree with cold showers. Those of you who have been longtime subscribers or seen my earlier videos might remember back when I was at the Hippocrates Health Institute. I did one video on their cold plunge pool they have there. They keep that pool a few degrees above freezing and in the hot Florida climate it's quite refreshing. If not very difficult to get into, you just kind of have to jump right in very quickly. But you get used to it over the week as you use it if you try and use it daily. And they also have it right next to the hot tub. So what you do ideally is to jump in then go in the hot tub and go back and forth about 30 seconds in each, if not a little longer, and this has a very stimulating effect on the whole body, but it is very invigorating uh, to your joints. It's very good for healing the joints and even healing nerve damage. I may have had nerve damage in my ankle from some kind of soccer injury, but I clearly had this very visceral pins and needles type feeling in my right ankle on the outside of it, uh, almost like pinpricks of nerve endings that I don't know what was going on. Could have been something very minor. Uh, I don't know what nerve damage would feel like, but could have been a past injury that was getting stimulated by that movement of blood flow from the surface of the skin deeper inwards and back and forth. It can bring up some sort of toxins or sludge or whatever would be built up in varying amounts uh, in the tissues uh, just from lack of blood flow in those areas. So that was very fascinating to experience and I began on and off practicing cold showers whenever I could get into it and actually keep the habit up. But I've always been one that works at building habits and you lose habits and you have to build them up again depending on the variety of things you're trying to work into your life and your lifestyle. Uh, so for the last few years it's been far less frequent that I've kept up the cold showers. This winter, however, I was getting ready for a trip with my brother and father up to our cottage in the winter uh, where we were going to snowshoe in and sleep overnight and it is a cottage with no insulation. It's basically like a shed on an island um, and we had to prepare with all the right clothing and all that but this was also a good opportunity to be exposed to the cold and get adapted to it. Uh, so I started doing cold showers for the week leading up to that which I think helped and also going on walks outside in the cold here in southern Ontario helped as well. Uh, my cottage is a couple hours north of here and we had a great time. I'll be sharing some clips from that trip uh, that I took on Snapchat at the end of this video and some might be the wrong shape because I shot them on Snapchat. They're in 10 second segments um, and you can also at times see the temperature of whatever day we were on. We were up there for three days, walked up one day, stayed overnight, had a whole day there on our own, stayed overnight, then went back the next day. So that was a great experience. But overall, my winter had been a lot more sedentary than perhaps I've ever had before. Uh, I've been out of a regular exercise routine for almost a full year, I hate to say it. Um, on and off exercise, I just, for whatever reason, really fell off the exercise bandwagon in the last 12 plus months. Uh, partly because for me, I need to have like a framework or ideology that I work with and when I really lose that, even though I have all this knowledge and have at times practiced various types of exercise without being under this one kind of framework, for whatever reason, I work better when I have that uh, to help me and motivate me to keep on with things. Um, so actually recently I took up a martial art, Sistema, for those of you who are interested in what I'm doing. It's a Russian martial art, quite interesting, maybe talk about it in a future video. But uh, yeah, being on that has got me once again interested and practicing some of the Russian strength exercises and flexibility exercises you may have seen me talk about in the past on my channel. So I don't know what will happen over the next few months with having this exercise routine again, but just in being a little more sedentary than I've ever been before in my life over the last year, I have had a bit of growth in uh, the old stomach. It's nothing too drastic and I haven't even had to change pants yet, but my pants are tighter than they've ever been. And that is in a wake-up call if I've ever had one. Um, so what I want to experiment with is cold thermogenesis to a greater degree. How I'm going to do that is 
uh, with this uh, tool that I may purchase depending on how my body reacts to these new exercise routines. I may not need to do it, but it looks like it has a lot of health benefits aside from just burning more fat, so it could be worth getting anyways. But it is an investment of 150, 160 bucks. Um, and it's a vest that you put ice packs in and it holds it close to your upper chest and neck and back, upper back. And the reason for that is, is the way that you burn fat from cold exposure is you have something called brown fat, which is quite different from white fat. There's two different fats in everyone. And white fat is the most abundant fat on the human body in adults. Brown fat is something that is are all around our body when we're infants but as we grow up it actually recedes and remains only in the upper chest and like I said upper shoulders and neck area back of the neck so those areas when they get exposed to cold temperatures they actually rev up and raise your metabolism quite significantly and they start to burn fat for fuel so over the last few years and increasingly it's been supported by research uh, people have been taking advantage of that and using those areas of the body, exposing them to cold, and that creates an environment of increased uh, fat burning capabilities. So like I said, I'll do a review of this product, but if you want to check out the guy's YouTube channel, you can find relevant links to where he sells it and things. I'll put that in the drop down menu below. Uh, and he's got lots of information on there about the benefits to joint health, the benefits to um, metabolism in general. You could get benefit from it even if you don't have any kind of fat you need to burn off. It could be preventative to cardiovascular type diseases, could be preventative to cancers, and that's more complex in terms of anatomy, and I'll be doing more videos on this in the future so I get more acquainted with it as well. I heard about this recently from a friend who bought one of these. Uh, she's only had it for about a week, but even in this very short amount of time she's noticed she started shedding pounds very quickly. This unique design makes it so that you can get that thermogenic uh, application without um, a lot of time being spent on say taking ice baths which was very popular and has continued to be popular in certain circles because you have to get the tub that you can submerge your whole body in, you have to put it on your deck, fill it with water every day that you're going to use it, put the ice in, I don't know if you're buying ice every day or you have to produce you know maybe a dozen trays of ice to put into that tub so that you can submerge your whole body. It's a lot more difficult when you have your whole body exposed to cold water like that um, whereas with the ice vest, it's just your core in specific places, so your extremities don't get too cold. Or the other way people do cryotherapy is in the winter, they put on gloves to keep their hands warm, perhaps leggings and something on your feet, and a hat uh, to prevent your extremities from getting cold. And you go outside with your top exposed, roll around the snow, or very minimal on top, and that allows for uh, the similar effect. Uh, but of course you can't do that in the summer. With the ice vest, you can do it all year round. It makes it easier in that you can do it in your home, you can work while you do it, you can prepare dinner or food or do house chores of some kind, watch TV. And the one test he's done is his best product, I believe it's the, the full vest, not just the upper torso vest. Not just the shoulder one that he has that covers those areas, it's one that actually has some cooling application to the uh, stomach area as well. And that one apparently burns 250 calories an hour and that's been tested and proven to occur which is quite remarkable. So like I said, this is just more of an introduction to these ideas and to let you know I might be covering this more in the future depending on if I get this thing and whether it works or not. And with that, I'll just leave you with these clips from my trip. So you can see this experience I had with um, my brother and father doing basically winter camping, although we had a heater available, a kerosene heater, which was literally the most important thing we had up there. Had we not had that, we would have had to just stay in our sleeping bags all day to stay warm. It was quite frigid. It's five hours earlier than I usually get up, and now I have to go pack and get ready to head. En route to the cottage, first stop, Toronto, to pick up Hermano. Don't eat all your snacks on the way up. I don't, I just need some meat. That was kind of stupid trying to open it with one hand. Scale in the background. Looks tiny on the video, but it's big, way bigger in person. Oh, which is a San Francisco, another public radio, but that's really popular. It's gained popularity in the last year. Um, what are you doing, Thomas? Aren't you a little cold? Yeah, a little. Oh, I'm good now. That's good.
the, the nice thing about a base layer, they're right. <laughs> so, battery's almost dead. I have to charge it later. Got an hour's walk ahead. We're in the cottage. It is freaking freezing, but we were very warm walking over because it was because it uh, was such hard work snowshoeing. It actually took an hour and three quarters, and thankfully we have a little bit of heat. Give me a look. It suits me. Buff. Day six at the cabin on Georgian Bay. We're doing all right. The cold temperatures aren't too bad, but we might be noticing some vague symptoms of time dilation. Not sure what that's about. Good night. So how do you stay warm in sub-zero temperatures besides just having a little heater like this? Well, you gotta have Nutella on bacon. So the windows are a little frosty on the inside of the cabin here, but you can see my dad and brother heading off for some trip. You can see the one. You can also see what's usually all water out here, and then out there is all water too. And yeah. Um, well, the Snapchat waiver for you to be on my Snapchat, I'll, uh, I'll get you to sign it at the end of the weekend, if that's okay. Not sure how much of this you'll be able to see, but there's snow blowing in really cool patterns out here on the frozen lake of Georgian Bay. Day 13, time distortion seems to be wearing off a bit. We're heading, getting ready to head off soon. It's pretty cold though. On the track below, just got overheated, removed our coats. Onward to the car, another hour or so. Feeling good. Only took out an hour and 15 minutes to get back compared to the hour and three quarters it took to get out there. It's a little colder coming back with lots of sun and wind on her back. Oh my god, it just took four tries to get the car started. What's that? That was the fourth time. Back home, it's been a long day, long trip, uh, but a lot of fun. I'd do it again. Uh, I recommend winter camping. I've done it before, but it's been a while. So there you have it. I'm glad you got a chance to see the interesting adventure I had this winter. I wanted to share it earlier, but I uh, didn't quite understand how I put it together and what context I'd share it under, but this seemed to be a relevant way to do that. And um, let me know if you've ever experienced or played around with cryotherapy slash cold thermogenesis or even cold water therapy in some way. It doesn't have to be that extreme, even if you've had uh, cold showers that you've use to invigorate yourself, what your experience has been with that, let me know in the comments below. Check out the link below for this guy's channel to see some of the cool stuff he's doing, some of his explanations of the benefits, and you can also check out the product and also his projects because he's also fundraising for a study or several studies I believe, uh, which I think some of them will be third party done, uh, so it's to fund a university to do the studies, and uh, yeah, I think that's important stuff to be doing. I love seeing independent people getting involved in the scientific process and getting studies in unique areas, which sounds like he's very gung-ho about doing. So with that, like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care and embrace life without limits.